Hello everybody, today is a perfume video and we will be talking about my um, wardrobe of Guerlain fragrances. So which fragrances from Guerlain I currently keep in my perfume wardrobe. Now uh, Guerlain is a perfume house that I respect very much. I've been buying from them for decades and I have a very special place in my heart. It's one of my favorite fragrance houses. There's a very, very special, warm, fuzzy, and cozy place in my heart for Guerlain fragrances. Um, at this particular point, I, I have eight <laughs> that are lingering about. And uh, we'll probably start at the far end here with the Mont Guerlain fra fragrances. Um, and let's start with the original. The original release was in 2017. Um, this bottle I got just this past year. Uh, I had mis mixed feelings regarding this particular scent. Uh, but I'm, I've really come around hard to um, be a big fan of it. <laughs> it somehow really, really suits my skin chemistry at this particular moment. When it just came out, it was sitting very sweetly on me, so it really didn't, it didn't really work out right away. But um, in the last couple of years, I've been more able to wear uh, sweet scents, and um, this vanillic tonka bean goodness really started sitting very nicely, beautifully, and elegantly on my skin. So I'm very happy that whatever change in my skin chemistry, it, it welcomed the Mon Guerlain for sure. Initially, the uh, um, branding was done with Angelina Jolie being the, the, the model, I suppose, um, in the promo shots. I'm kind of lukewarm on it. I don't think she particularly suits the scent or her image particularly suits the scent, but I don't really, care whatever i think they should have actually used um their usual sort of celebrity model person natalia odanova i think um i think she would have suited the spirit of the scent better uh, it is what it is i don't particularly care about what 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 the branding is like so we are going to just talk about the scent here it is a 2017 release uh terry wasser is uh, one of the um, one of the noses on the roster for this one and it is very much a scent of its time but it's also got its timeless component that a lot of Guerlain fragrances do possess. Uh, the timeless component here is a beautiful uh, a beautiful lavender that rests on the Guerlainade. Uh, the uh, uh, gorgeous slightly delicate um, yet fluffy vanilla is in here. It's pretty powerful. It's, uh, if you want to boil it down to two uh, dominant notes, it'll be lavender and vanilla. And I think that's a lovely and very elegant combination, very elevated and refined. I think it was very smart of them to use lavender. The scent has um, part of the Guerlainade, which is jasmine and rose supporting notes, but they're by no means um, dominant uh, and a bit of sandalwood is lurking in the background really supporting that vanilla and giving it some grounding um, a little bit of benzoin is supporting the sweetness with a little bit of heft all of this is pretty comforting <laughs> this is a very very comforting cozy scent for me um, and I think very much wearable. Um, I don't see really a particular person who's going to be definitely not suitable in terms of wearing this scent, but in my mind it's more of a self-assured, calm, it's got a calm presence around it, uh, so I guess if you want to promote that in yourself and really try to pull those traits out, um, then uh, Mongolan is going to be a good, good scent. But I am feeling that it's probably mostly suited uh, to someone who's self-assured, who's calm, who's cool under pressure, who's got their things figured out and knows what to do with themselves and with their life. I think it's uh, non-phasability of this, of this uh, wearer, somebody who's just going to um, run with whatever's happening around them and uh, confidently handle any kind of trouble that comes their way. That's for me Mont Guerlain and I appreciate it. It's an easy scent to pull off. It's an easy scent to wear. There's a lavender freshness but vanillic uh, benzoic coziness. So it's it's a very nice balance of the two and it does 
um, it does create that sensation that everything is going to be okay. So uh, Mont Guerlain was a very pleasant surprise. I've used it quite a bit and I do think I'll be pulling for it this year a lot. Another scent from the same line that I've been using a ton, as you can see, I'm about halfway through my bottle, is the Eau de Toilette of Mont Guerlain. Here, this composition is much fresher and kind of like reshuffled deck of cards. Um, they, they do have a very similar ring to them, but it's like you took a Mont Guerlain and you mixed up the notes a little bit. Um, the lavender is still there, it's still ever present. The citruses are much bigger and uh, much more effervescent, much fresher and sharper. The vanillic base is still there, but it's a little bit more shy, a little bit more withdrawn and smaller. So um, here we probably have the same person, but in spring or summer. Uh, so I think that it's definitely the same family, but at the toilet it's much more lightweight if you aren't tolerant of sweet, su sweet vanilla, but I, you would like that same flair, just much lifted in terms of the vanillic presence, then I think the toilet is going to be a good choice. I've enjoyed it, especially in spring and summer. I think that's a good spring and summer scent. It's a good addition to the line. It makes sense. I see exactly what the storyline is that they were trying to achieve, and I, I see how it relates to Mont Guerlain and how it is um, a continuation of the line. I think it's a good way to go in terms of developing the line. Um, so I'd say if you like Mont Guerlain, but you think it's a little heavy on the sweetness for the summer, spring and summertime, a de toilette is probably going to be a good pick for you because you will enjoy it just as much. It's just gonna be a little bit more lifted and citrusy. Um, so try it out if you're interested. And then we have another reshuffle of Mont Guerlain, and this is the, the Parfum Sensuel. So the sensual, um, iteration so if Mont Guerlain is pretty pretty vanilla heavy this is heavier um, the wear time is about the same I would say Sansuel maybe wears a little bit longer but really not by much for sure not by any kind of notable memorable amount um, but Sensuel is a very similar scent to, to Mont Guerlain so you probably don't need both they are quite not just in the same wheelhouse, but they're like sharing a bunk <laughs> together. They're very, very similar. But here the lavender is big and in charge, but you have even um, an even more present uh, powerful vanilla backed by benzoin and backed by tons of tonka. So again, very similar, but this one leans more in the boudoir um, side of things. Perhaps this is her on vacation. This is her at a romantic um, dinner or after the romantic dinner. So, you know, same, same idea. I think I like the original a little bit more because it's just a touch more versatile. This is a little bit sweeter, uh, but I would say if you have one, you probably don't need the other. Um, let me know, do you also feel like these are pretty similar? Uh, I do like Sensuel and I'll be finishing it up, but for repurchase, um, for repurchase, I will probably select the Mont Guerlain, uh, the Parfum original. So those are the three flankers that I have for the Mont Guerlain. Let's move on to the other, the B bottles. How about that? The very first one here is one of my absolute favorite, um, absolute favorite violets. I'm a big, big fan of violet scents. Violet scents are something that I am a collector of, and I finish up violet scents pretty quickly and constantly. And this is L'Instant Magique by Guerlain, and this is the other parfum version. Um, I have it in this beautiful B bottle. They are releasing most of what they have in B bottles these days. And here we have a powdery, sweet, floral, um, very heavy on candied violets, kinds of scent. Um, the really beautiful piece here is that you do have all that candied violet sweetness, but it's slightly ground in, grounded in a creamy note of almonds. Vanillic, edible, boulangerie almonds. Um, and candied violets really go very well with that. Um, it is a truly elevated, lovely, beautiful, mature and sophisticated scent truly for somebody who is a lover of violets if you love violets i think this is like irreplaceable for me i think i will pick it over 
and insulins, uh, for example, I do have insulins. I love insulins, but if I had to choose a violet, I would probably keep L'Instant Magique, and I'll probably I would probably keep the Balenciaga <laughs> original, uh, the Parfum. So uh, L'Instant Magique is a perfect representation of this um, style of very femme um, and very ethereal um, sort of char characterization of a person who might be wearing it. Uh, it. It is powdered. It is with a vintage nod, but very modern. It is um, creating this, uh, this essence of femininity sort of situation. As we know, we are always on a spectrum and we have some masculine traits and we have some feminine traits. There is some distilled femininity in this. So if you're missing some, you might want to top up with, with L'Instant Magique because it is a, an extremely uh, soft and nurturing and powdered and, um, you know, sh chiffon clad kind of scent. Uh, there is a transparency and a little bit of mystery in it. Very, very beautiful. It's sitting on a base of a very clean white musk, so you do get also that lightweight cleanliness that comes with the good white musk, and certainly this scent will provide you that. Some florals, some anise, in general, just a beautiful, beautiful representation of what a candied violet uh, can smell like and the almond note in here is truly genius because it it just goes so very well with the violet scent um, Very happy with it. Try it if you're a fan of powdery scents um, It's a, for me one of the ultimate ultime of powderiness really really impressive um, Also a powdery violet is going to be insolence uh, very, very popular scent. In my case, this is another toilette. I've owned another parfum before and it was a little too powdery sweet for me to wear long term. I've settled on the other toilette and it is a better fit for me. I do like this particular formulation better for me. I know that a lot of people will prefer the other parfum. That's not what I have. I have the other toilette. In its essence, the scent is violet, 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 iris, some sweet berries. That's kind of what, what's going on here. It's fairly straightforward. It's very girly. If the other one is a little more mysterious, this one is just straight up girly. And uh, it has this uh, very cosmetic quality to it um, because of the combination of the violet and the iris. This often produces this kind of a cosmetic scent, which I really like. Um, to truly cross over into that cosmetic powderiness territory, it would probably need a, a weft of rose, which it does not have. So florals here are very, very purple. There's not really much going on apart from that. And they're sitting on a tasty berry base. Um, and it's kind of like this berry violet mousse. So a little bit tasty even. There's like a gourmand component to it. Um, which comes from the berries. The berries are fruity, but the scent itself is not very fruity. I would say it's more meringue. It's more like berry and violet meringue. That's the cloudy kind of sensation that it does provide. For another toilet, it's a relatively long lasting scent. It wears well. I really have no qualms with it. And I do think that it is just a little less in your face punchy uh, in terms of its powderiness than is the other parfum. So for me, my preference is the other toilet. I do think that this construction works better for me and for my purposes. Um, let me know, would you prefer other parfum or other toilet? I'm curious, so write down below. Another piece here that I am absolutely gaga goo goo gaga over, and <laughs> this is a petit galant. Um, Totally unpopular scent. This is not something that is among their best sellers um, in their lineup, but it is a genius, genius scent to me. So um, I am extremely happy to have been able to find it. It was an absolute fluke. Um, it's the the blue label. If you're interested, there's also a pink one. So the Petit Galant that I have here is just a joy for me because it is a gorgeous. Um, gorgeous skin scent. It's a definition of a skin scent and what a skin scent is supposed to do in my books. It is the the most 
ethereal waft of clean skin scent, um, supposed to be emulating a, a scent of a newborn baby. I suppose if anybody's ever gotten close, it's it's, it's them. Uh, it does it does smell not like a perfume. It smells like you. It smells like somebody really clean and lovely and fresh and very healthy. They would smell like this. In terms of notes, there is this cleanliness and freshness and a little bit of bitterness from the orange blossom that's coming through. Then we have mimosa and a little bit of honey. Um, the honey isn't particularly sweet. It's more like, it's more the smell of the beehive with the wax and the, and the, uh, the pollen. Uh, so it's a, quite a realistic, waxy honey smell. So it's a mix of those molecules, not a straight up sweet sugary honey. And all of that is laying on the base of a very clean white musk. So this is, I would say, a beautiful white musk scent with some interesting um, undertones of uh, different things that give it this like sort of magical um, feeling of just clean baby skin. So I mean, this is not for everyone. If you like a monster sillage, it's not for you. This is not going to wear very long. It's not going to be projecting, really. But if you're a fan of skin scents or you don't like perfumes and don't want to appear to be wearing a fragrance, something like this might be just up your alley for sure. It's very special. It's definitely not for everyone. But if you get it, you get it. You know, if, if you are into that kind of a perfumery, you are going to be extremely, extremely happy to have found this guy because uh, they are not uh, the most popular kinds of scents and they're not produced very much these days. So I have used up a ton of this scent and I will continue to love it until I love it to death and then I'm going to probably repurchase. I do like it that much. Then we have two more from the Aqua Allegoria lineup. Um, we'll start with the uh, Flora Nymphaea. Flora Nymphaea is a scent that, this is my last bottle of it. It was a limited release. It's impossible to find these days. I just finished fairly recently another bottle of it and I only had one stashed back, which I, which I purchased um, by fluke. I was so, so happy to find it. But uh, alas, I probably will never have Flora, uh, Flora Nymphaea ever again. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous floral, um, very beautiful honeyed floral, again, with a waxy note and lots of pollen. So if this is a skin scent, this is definitely a perfume. So it's not exactly the same thing, but they do have some similarities in terms of how the notes are married together. So Flora Nymphaea, beautiful white floral with gorgeous honey beehive um, sort of background and it's it, it just brings me a lot of joy i am going to be probably using this one up as well and this is the last time i will be able to enjoy flora nymphaea unfortunately like i said it's not easily accessible we have uh, then aqua allegoria limon, limon vert which is uh, a limey green scent so grassy limey scent uh, with a little bit of sweetness at the at the base so it's it's a sweeter lime it's a very beautiful green scent. If you're into green scents for the summer, I have enjoyed it a ton. It's about halfway done at this point. Um, I love wearing it in the summer months because that bitterness from the lime really helps cut the sweaty grime of the summer heat and brings that, that uh, unbeatable freshness that only a very green scent can give you in the dead of the summer so lovely green limey uh, citrus if you enjoy that kind of a scent it does not smell like a lemon scent per se and it doesn't have this this cleaner quality that a lot of uh, citruses can have it it's its own it's its own person it stands apart and it does give you the bitter grassy uh, sensation as well which I I find very refreshing even more refreshing than the actual citrus so those are the guerlains that I have right now what do you have in your stash what what are you using in terms of guerlain fragrances are there any like crazy repurchased scents that you definitely have been buying for a long time and will continue buying 
I have tried a lot from the Guerlain lineup. Obviously not everything. I'm hoping one day I will catch up and just would have tried and owned everything. Um, but so far I've been very happy with these releases. The only one I might be a little bit eh on having purchased was the Mangal en Sensuel, mostly because it's just so similar to the original that it probably it probably didn't add very much to my overall enjoyment of the line. The rest of the scents I'm, I treasure, I really, really value, and most of them I will probably be buying again. So let's talk about Guerlain scents. What are your favorites from, from their releases? And uh, write that down below and let's chat. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Good luck. Stay safe. Stay well. And take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.